Hey guys, welcome back to the Everything Tech channel, bringing you the world of technology. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Windows 7 on your Mac using Parallels Desktop 9. And I believe it should work with Desktop 10. I don't have Desktop 10 yet. I don't have the $80 to drop on that program. Besides, it's the exact same thing as Desktop 9. Now, here we have Parallels Desktop, so we want to go ahead and open it. And by the way, I just clean installed my whole computer. All my programs are fresh. Everything is fresh on my computer. That's why I have to install it. Now, here we have Parallels. As you can see here, you can migrate Windows from a PC. Uh, basically, I believe you, you make an image from your hard drive on a Windows computer and you put it on here, but we're not going to go through that. We're going to use this instead. And look below, you can install Chrome OS. I don't recommend it. It's terrible. Ubuntu, you can do that if you want, as well as any other flavor of Linux. You can also download that image file uh, and, and use it with Parallels, as well as Android, which I don't recommend because there's no touch interface. And you can install Mavericks using a recovery partition. I believe this works also with uh, Yosemite, but we're not going to be using any of this now. You can use it if you so choose, but today we're going to be working with Windows 7. Now, if you want to download the Windows 7 um, ISO file and legally, you just want to go to this website here, which I'm going to be linking in the description. It is How to Geek. They give you a link to the ISO image file for Windows 7. They say Windows 8 and 8.1, but it doesn't. They don't really have anything compared to here. Windows 7. They give you Home Premium, both a x86, which is 32-bit. Uh, and x64 which is 64 bit for both home premium professional and ultimate now the only catch to downloading this is if you want to go for ultimate you got 30 days to put in the trial key or your uh, your product key and it'll unlock itself I have the professional 64 bit and I do have my product key and I'm going to be using this link I already have it downloaded but below right here my downloads and this is what the file looks like x17 dash not a few numbers dot iso now you just want to click on whichever version you have or whichever version you want to try and by clicking on the link you're gonna down start downloading the image file now I did scroll below to see if they have anything for Windows 8 and 8.1 because I do want to try Windows 8 and 8.1 and they don't have anything here except if you have Windows 8 you can get a free upgrade to Windows 8.1 which I don't have either of them anymore. So we just want to go ahead and download any of the Windows 7 versions and we're going to go ahead and close this and install Windows. Automatically it, it reads that there's Windows 7 on the hard on your hard drive so you just want to continue. You can do this version requires a product key and punch in your product key here or you can go ahead and skip that. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for the sake of this video and just hit continue and you have two options. You want to run it like a Mac or you want, want to run it like a PC. I go for like a PC because it keeps it all windowed. Like for example, Windows 7 is limited to only this window here and this window here only. If you run it like a Mac, you can drag all of the stuff from Windows onto your Mac desktop and run, let's say, Office 2010 right here, uh, Photoshop over here, Final Cut over here, and so on and so forth and so I like to keep it like a PC because it keeps it nice and neat so you want to hit continue you want to go ahead and name your Windows version whether you want to add them or not so I'm just gonna call it Windows 7 because that's what the name it gives me I like to go to customize settings before installation because I can go ahead and pick how much RAM I want to give this virtual machine and how many CPU cores my computer supports four cores so I'm gonna go ahead and give it three three cores with four gigs of RAM and I'm going to hardware hard disks and the 64 gigs doesn't seem fair enough for this partition so I might give it one terabyte or I might give it just um, 500 gigs so you can select it from the slider here or go ahead and punch in any numeric value here so I'm just going to give it straight up 500 gigs apply and it's highly recommended to make a backup now you can disregard it if you're this early into the upgrading stage but if you want to up your memory after you've done some work on there you do want to back up your stuff before you do this because 
files may become corrupt. It says here expanding disk 500 gigs. Go ahead and close this. We're done here. Three cores, four gigs of RAM, five, 500 gigs of disk space. So we can go ahead and continue. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but the basic is one core of processing power, one gig of RAM, and 64 gigs of memory. So if you want to go ahead and change that, you can also do that after the fact. So as you can see here, it's already booting up Windows and setup is starting. Now it seems that the ISO I downloaded has all of the versions installed. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the version that I like best or the version that I have more. So I have Windows 7 Professional, but if I want to try Ultimate or home ba if you're a home basic user and you want to go to home premium, so on and so forth, pick your favorite and you can if you don't have the product key you can go ahead and purchase it so I have the Windows 7 professional key here I would try ultimate but really there's no difference between ultimate and professional except like the language packs which obviously I don't need so go ahead and pick professional hit next and it begins doing its thing the Windows copying Windows files and all that stuff it's gonna reboot so oh it's doing it awfully fast actually alrighty so I'm back here and as you can see here we have Windows 7 Professional preparing my desktop. Now I forgot to record, well I wasn't here to record uh, what happens after you're finished installing everything, but it's just a black screen. It's just a black screen with like this yellow flashing light at the bottom, so nothing special really. What matters is that we are installing Windows 7. So here it is. It's still preparing my desktop. I hope it doesn't take long. Alright, so here we continue to install Windows 7 and as you can see here it's installing the Parallels tools. This is really necessary in order for you to be able to use any peripherals that work only on Mac. That includes your Apple SuperDrive and your keyboard that belongs to either your laptop or your desktop, whichever you're running because I do have a separate Windows keyboard and Windows mouse that doesn't matter either way it still has to register all the parallels tools including the drivers for a graphics card so it uses your hard drive properly and all that stuff so it has to install I'm not sure you need an internet connection for this but in case you do just have it ready don't turn off your internet connection or don't do this where there isn't any internet connection so we can just wait here until it's done installing and the installer just finished. It's setting up my personalized settings and theme setup. There we go. Now it looks better. So it looks like it's gone now. The window's gone. Let's see what happens here. Hopefully we get our taskbar popping up along with our other windows related stuff. So there's our So it has to restart in order to install all your drivers. So we're just gonna let it restart. And we'll be right back after this is done. So it just restarted now and it, we got a black screen so we're just going to go ahead and wait to see what happens. And as you can see here it's booting up normally. Windows 7 Professional, welcome and all that stuff. And we have successfully installed Windows 7 on Parallels. Now if you want to run this on the VirtualBox, it's not really recommended. I like Parallels better than, than uh, VirtualBox because Parallels is much more, more uh, the crinkles are more ironed out. So if you can get your hands on Parallels at any price, you can go ahead and do so. I do like it, and I do recommend the program. There we go. We have Windows 7 running on our Mac, which is weird. And here is our par par look, Parallels shared desktop folder. I like this because it lets me access anything on my my Mac. Here's a home folder and it gives me access to my desktop, my documents on my computer. Let's see if if our uh, trial period began. So all we have to do is go to start. Don't click on computer. You want to right click and go to properties. Then this comes out as you can see here. It tells us that we are running an Intel Core i5 CPU processor clocked at 2.9 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, uh, 64 bit operating system and here is my name I have three days until I have to activate or change my product key so I can just click here 
and activate windows and I can enter my product key right here and hit next I'll be back after I do that so I'll see you back when I do this alrighty guys so I'm back here I did adjust the resolution and make it full screen so we can see everything here and as you can see I did um, activate my windows and now we're free to use windows as we please if you're the kind of person that likes to check the time down here you might see that it's significant time jump from the last time we were here and that's because I couldn't find my product key. I thought I had it with me near my desk, but then I happened to find it somewhere else where it wasn't supposed to be. But I found it and it worked. So that's it for this video. If you're listening to me now, thank you very much for sticking around in this really, really long video on how to install Windows 7 using Parallels on your Mac. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. See you next time.